This video will contain spoilers. Uh, beginning review. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I think it's called. I don't know. Um. Okay, then I'm at the very start of it. Like, I've only got as far as the end of the second planet out of nine, I think. But uh, so far, it's, it's quite easy. And I feel like the fact there's a difficulty setting on it, because they didn't have that on Size Matters. And that game was fucking, like... I didn't like playing Size Matters because of how hard it was. <clears throat> um... Also, because, probably because I was playing Size Matters last, uh, graphics in this, fucking amazing. Like, I knew it was a PS5 game and all, but still, god damn. Um, I like Rivet. She, like, I thought that it was just going to be, you know, just another character, but no, she, she has, like, a full personality and it, it does feel like she's been in the series since the first game like she feels as sorry about that but she just feels like she's been there since the start you know like she is as iconic as Ratchet, Clank, Captain Quark and uh, Dr. Nefarious and I nearly said Nefario. No. Not that not that one. Um Gameplay, quite fun. I do like the fact that they Raritanium is actually rare. Like it didn't really feel all that rare in Tools of Destruction. And then it just wasn't it didn't exist in Size Matters. Um I don't know if I've said this in my Tools of Destruction video. I, no, I definitely didn't say in my, my Size Matters videos. But um, I've played some of the games for Like, I've played one. I've played Crack in Time, Quest for Booty, and the 2016 remake. I was quite a fan of it when I was, like, seven, I think. But uh, I stopped. Like, I got scared of Crack in Time, and then I stopped for quite a while. But uh, Tools of Destruction is me getting back into the series. It just took over a year for me to do Size Matters. Because um, <clears throat> it would have been much cheaper for me to get PS Plus Premium. And then play the games through that. But I've realised that you, <laughs> you can only stream the games. And my internet's not good enough to do that. So I'm just going to have to buy them anyway. But, uh, you know, the only reason why I've played Size Matters is because I had premium at the right time. And then I would have bought uh, Rift Apart anyway. But it's just I got it for free because of premium. So, getting it wasn't all bad, plus it only cost me like £17. Anyway. Um... Yeah, rare rare titanium is actually rare, and also collectibles are marked on the map, which is great. Like, <laughs> it also feels weird that um, this is the first. If you discount the twenty sixteen remake, it's the first Ratchet and Clank game in ten years, and uh, there also just wasn't. Uh, an original game released on PS4. So this kind of feels like it's a sort of legacy sequel, kind of like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Um. <clears throat> but uh, if this is like the start of a new era of Ratchet and Clank, I highly welcome it because so far, what they've done, like despite the fact that this is. Well, like, kind of one, two, three, one of the main games here. Tools of Destruction. I got Quest for Booties, like a short, short thing, but we'll count that. Uh, Kraken Time, Nexus. 
so this is the eighth game, I think. It still feels, maybe it's because this is only my third one, and I didn't count size matters in that, by the way. But, uh, you know, <laughs> basically the opposite of what I'm saying in my Yakuza videos, where it's getting a bit old. But with Ratchet and Clank, they've kept it fresh as fuck. Like, it is, it is going good. But, uh, this is probably going to be the last Ratchet and Clank game I play for a while, unless they put one of the, the PS3 games on on premium as a PS4, PS5 game, which I doubt they'll, they'll probably just keep it as streaming only. More likely to get one, two, and three on there, but to be honest, I don't really want to play those. I don't know why, I just don't. Um, in my head, I, I feel like 1, 2, and 3 are different from the rest, gameplay-wise. But they're exactly the fucking same, so I don't know why I'm thinking that. So, just... The reason why it's going to take so long is because I'm going to do this. I'm going to play Fahrenheit, which don't be a review for that, because... Yeah, I've never actually played Fahrenheit before, but I've watched a guy play Fahrenheit. Um, so I'm just not gonna review it. Um, and then I think is that it? Way out, but I think I might be co-op only. Like I don't think there's a way you can do that single player. Um. <clears throat> so I I need to wait for Batman to be free. But I just look at the games I've got on here. Um Won't be doing Yagasa for a very long time because there are free games in between four and five that I need to watch. Two of them are Japan only. One of them was released here, but it is extremely expensive to get it. It's like seven hundred and fifty pounds. Anyway, got the Lego DC Super Villains, which it's the only, besides Skywalker Saga, which I'm putting that off for a very long time because it's the longest game I have here. Um, DC Super Villains is the only one that I've got to do, at least on PS4, PS5. Uh, there is also the Lego Harry Potter collection, but I don't know if I'm going to play that because it's not open world. Um, I might go back and do Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Last of Us remake, or you know, the PS4 remaster because just to get collectibles for those. But I don't know. Um, and then there's the Tomb Raider one, two, three remastered. Like I want to get through all the, all those games plus others that I've yet to come out or that I forgot about it and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll probably go and do PS3 stuff because I still have a couple games that I need to play. There's also some PSP games, and then at that point I'll buy Ratchet and Clank now that I have money. Or that now that I have a job. Um, I've rambled enough. I read. Assassin's Creed, Last Descendants, Tomb of the Can. I should have finished this a week ago, but I stopped reading again. And I've been playing catch up, which I'm very close to catching up. I'm only a week behind now. And this time it wasn't because of a sickness. It, uh, I, I just got lazy, I guess. Um, usually if I miss a day, I miss... A week at least. And that's going. That's not just for reading. That's for like. Taking daily tablets. Brushing my teeth. Stuff like that. I know these are things. Especially brushing my teeth. These are things that should be just hard coded. Where I do it. And it's just like impossible for me to forget. But. I, I just. I, I forget. Um. 
the ending of this felt a lot better. It did kind of feel like uh, Boys Season 4 ending. Like, I, I could imagine that Nirvana song playing during it. Um, but overall, I think because they spent a good chunk of it in different stories that they just it had no real relevance to the plot. It did, like, the, the first, say, half of the book did feel a bit crap. Because you'll have, like, someone was in a farm, someone else was doing something else, I don't really remember. And really, the only simulations, there were quite a few, but the only ones that really mattered were Owen's, Natalia's, and Sean's. Everyone else, their their characters, like they had great importance, but their simulations do not give a fuck. I don't even remember most of them. I only really remember that farm, and also David was a a pilot in World War Two. Um, excuse my stomach. I don't know what the fuck's going on. In the first book, they did this, the fact that, like, Monroe was sort of neutral in the Assassin Templar War, and he remained neutral the entire time. Um, like, it was respectable in the first book. In this, he can, sh he can shove it up his ass, because he, he's just absolutely... I'm not the kind of person to say that sitting on the fence is bad... Like, I hate when people say that, but in this case, he did fuck over Natalia and, well, really everyone else, because it's what led to Isaiah getting the, the, the fear prong. Because if it were me, if I were Monroe, I'd be like, look, I mean, I'm, obviously I'm on the side of the assassins, but just... I'd be saying, like, I'm neutral, but you can, you know, if you just want to join the Templars or the Great of the Assassins. Right? Whatever. But in this, uh, they, they talk about how the Assassins are hypocrites because... They say that, you know, they want people to be free, but yet they kill people. Well, those those people are the people that are restricting freedom. They need to die. Yeah, there probably are better ways, but just most of the time, killing is the only way that they can achieve that. And also, they basically just, they are slaves to freedom. That sounds like something, that is something from 1984. So, what's this guy's name? Matthew J. Kirby, I get, I get what you're trying to do. You're doing really good work here, but what the fuck? I don't know what else to say because I'm reading the book over like a two month period, so these book reviews are really hard to do. Um, whereas for most other things, especially the I've been doing a lot of mini series recently, they're they've been fine, and the games as well because they. Despite how long they are, I do beat them quite quickly. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Babes. Mixed ratings. I watched it in the cinema. A lot of Glazer, Hassan Minaj, John Carroll Lynch, Oliver Platt. I did not know that they were actual twins. I, To be honest, I thought that it was one guy. That they just had playing two roles. Anyway. I wanted this because it's an Alana Glazer film. Like, this would have, you know, it's basically just Broad City with my hobby. Um, and it, it's going to be not as good as Broad City. And also, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of things in it that I disagree with because I really just should not like Broad City, but I do. And all of that I just said, I was right about. Um, you know, the, I mean, she doesn't end up getting an abortion, which, that's based, but uh, stuff like she doesn't want to like push labels on her baby. But I mean, it ended up being a boy. The baby has, or no, sorry, it ended up being a girl. Like the baby has 
Now I'm not going to get into that because that's that's not really relevant to the video. So uh, sorry for the app. But just point being that I went into this expecting there to be a lot of political bullshit, but I was hoping that I would be able to ignore it because it's such the comedy is so fucking stupid and it's just not my kind of comedy. But I would somehow still like it and I ended up still liking it. Because it this it, like when I say this is like really like Broad City, it is really like Broad City. Like <clears throat> there were two old people sitting in front of me. And I think they went into this expecting, you know, you're just a average comedy film. Because these people aren't going to know who Alana Glazer is. They're not going to know what Broad City is. And I expected them to leave. Like, part way into it. Because they were so offended by... Or not not really offended, but it's just like... They wouldn't, they wouldn't like it. And there would be probably some parts to be offended by. But no, they, they stayed. I don't know if they liked it or not. They didn't really laugh all that much. If at all. But they stayed for the, the entire thing. Um, and again, I do even if I don't like films. But there's this one scene I can think of where... Um, Alana asks Dom, a character... And Dawn just sort of like looks at her and goes, bitch. And then Alana goes, bitch. And then they just keep on saying bitch to each other in weird and different ways. And it, it's just, it has Alana Glazer trademark on it, which it's so unfunny. P just period. I didn't like that scene, but quite a few bits. I was just able to ignore her Alana Glazerisms. Um, just, it was, uh, it was a decent film. I'm not hitting on, on Alana Glazer, by the way. I, I fucking love Broad City. It's just, her style of comedy is not for me. Before we move on to the event and Jacob, I just wanted to mention one more thing. See, even though we had very little screen time in this, I think Oliver Platt in it was really, really weird because me and Ben Man have been watching uh, The Bear recently and his character in The Bear versus his character in this. Total opposites. Which, um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't thinking that Oliver Platt doesn't have range. Like, he's usually... The sort of sidekick, I guess. Like in Love and Other Drugs. But in The Bear, he was more domineering. Um, so I knew that he wasn't like just one-sided. But uh, just one, one end of the spectrum to the other. Like that was just, it was a bit weird to look at. Anyway, final review, Defending Jacob. Um, to be honest, even though it's an Apple show, it, it's not a legal drama, but I thought it was going to be a legal drama. Um, and just, this seems like something I would love. I went into it thinking this is going to be so fucking boring, and the reviews is going to be way too similar to my Blackbird final review. Um... But no, I, I did quite enjoy it. And yeah, it just it's not a legal drama. It's just... It's a drama that has legal themes to it, which is not the same, because only the last two episodes are actually the, the case. But anyway. It's weird seeing Chris Evans... I don't know if I said this in the initial review, but it's weird seeing Chris Evans in... A super serious tone like this. 
like you know I've I've seen MCU and Scott Pilgrim and I think that's the only things I've seen Chris Evans in as far as I know so you know the, those are all for the most part comedies and even when they're not comedies they're still a light drama whereas this is super serious even just from the theme music but he does a really good job of being this dad who is morally conflicted um, and it's just sp speaking of range you know going from this patriotic man who he has his ups and downs but he never loses hope to this man who I mean he, I don't think he ever lost hope but it, it still just was like just depressing as fuck especially with that ending like I I nearly cried to be honest and speaking of I know it's not the same because Broadchurch is a police show with you know where they investigate the crime whereas as I said this is a legal themed drama so it's not exactly the same, but this is how you do a twist ending. Like it with the the flash forwards it did a really good job of making you think like what the fuck how can there be more to this, at least uh, than the last episode. You know, he's been not necessarily proven innocent, but the the case is over, like what the fuck's going on? And they could have just done it, like, you know, somehow the police find out that that guy didn't do it, and it was Jacob. But no, they, they've thrown on another tragedy, and then it just got to the point where the wife, I forget her name, she just couldn't take it anymore, and that, like, was not expected at all. And it was done extremely well. This might be one of the best twists ever done in media. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that because it's just, you know, I'm using Broadchurch as the example because I feel like with how they ended it, at least for season one, the guy just confesses, which it's different, but there's a reason why it's not done by other shows because it's just it's anticlimactic. Whereas this, it's sort of anticlimactic because you're not getting the happy ending that you want. But um, it, excuse me, in a twisted way, it is actually sort of a happy ending because I mean Jacob's fate is left ambiguous. But I would me like hair cannon. I'd say he lives. And the wife also doesn't die. And the case is over. They never actually reveal if Jacob did or not, which also love. I think he did do it, but it's just in you know, in the twist away, this is sort of a happy ending because they their life will never be the same, but they can still move on. I think I had something else to say about it, but I was just I kept on thinking of other things. As I was talking and then I just added that and I forgot what the initial thing to say was. Um, Cinema review coming soon, I hope. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, <laughs> there will be another book review for at least two months because, you know, t uh, Tim of the Cam took me two months, I think. British it was June, I finished it. And I'm now on Fate of the Gods, which is the third book in the last Sinus trilogy. And it's it's slightly longer than Tim of the Can. So, you know. I haven't read comics since like the middle of July. It's been nearly a month, if not a month already. So no review for coming for that soon. I haven't I would have been reading a lot if more for the fact that I wanted to get through all the games that I have. And then possibly the PS3 games. And then possibly shows on Netflix, Amazon, my Skybox, etc. 
so no comic reviews coming for a very, very long time. As for show reviews, I doubt it. I'm going to go on to another miniseries now that Defending Jacob has done, which there's seven episodes of that left. Um, which, you know, that was the same amount as Defending Jacob. But, just it will take at least a week or two. So it's not really all that soon.